it's a lot to get to. And uh, I'm excited to be out here for Jaron and, and for Team USA and for what it means for the Memphis Grizzlies. Yeah, we, we won't keep you too long because the, the Wi-Fi is a little noticeably shaky, but we're okay uh, right now. Just in terms of, this is a big moment for, for Jaron. We've spent so much time this offseason talking about Ja for obvious reasons. Uh, Jaron is a little bit on the other side of things, not only getting ready to enter what could be uh, another big all-star caliber season for him, but it gets started where, and you correct me if I'm wrong, He's not just a member of USA Basketball right now. He projects as somebody who is going to be very important to their quest to try to win a, a gold medal. Is that right? Oh, th th there's no question about it. They've already had some meetings uh, yesterday and today. I got into town yesterday. First person I saw uh, was Brandon Ingram, um, you know, uh, work coming out of a workout. A couple minutes later, Tyrese Halliburton was there, then bumped into Mark View at the hotel. Uh, Jaron was part of the uh, check-in process pretty early, and, and they're going to him as sort of the elder statesman on this team uh, because he's been involved. Although none of these guys have played in the Olympics or World Cup, uh, Jaron has been in the USA pipeline since you know since he was 16 years old. So he was here in 2016 uh, for the uh, FIBA. Excuse me, they won the FIBA Under-17 World Championship. He came back in 2019 and was a member of the select team that practiced against what became that 2020 gold medal winning. Uh, USA team and now he's back here now so even at 24 years old um, you know with a, a two-time first team all defensive guy defensive player of the year all -star, there are not many guys around this roster who have that kind of resume and uh, so he's sort of the elder statesman and they're looking for big things not just this uh, this run but moving forward there there is some thought um, that not even thought, it's just the way the calendar works. If the United States uh, progresses uh, through the bra you know, through everything and ends up playing for the, the gold medal, and uh, the two favorites to, to reach the gold medal game would be the United States and Spain, that game will not be played until September 10th. That's more than a month from now. That is a long time to be, for the most part, daily competing in basketball. When you win or lose a gold medal game, um, you're at that point, I believe, just three weeks away from the start of training camp. Is there any concern about uh, just the, the not miles, that's not the right word, but, you know, that, that Jaron is spending uh, the last significant part of his offseason uh, playing basketball in a way that will run up right to the verge of, of training camp? Is that a negative in any way? I mean, it, it, physically, it is it is taxing. It, it is a challenge, uh, to say the least. But the thing about Team USA and, and having covered a few of these USA training camps and Olympic team runs, they work hand in hand, hand, in hand with uh, your your home team, your NBA team's training and nutrition staff. As a matter of fact, the Grizzlies will have someone here uh, monitoring Jaron, just like every other player will have one of his hometown team guys. Uh, working with Team USA just to check in, just to make sure things are going the way that they need to be going physically. And you don't want to overwork these guys. You know, um, the best thing about the Team USA experience is that the head coach and the executive director both uh, played in the NBA, won championships in the NBA in the Hall of Fame when you talk about Steve Kerr uh, and Grant Hill. And the NBA staff is also there. Eric Spolstra was just on the staff with Miami that got to the NBA Finals. So he knows the, the workload that it takes to, to, and, and the offloading that's important during the offseason. So with Jaron and, and, and Santi, for that matter, they're not going to hold back. But what they'll do is sort of get a little bit of a, a, a leeway going into training camp where they're not going to be overtaxed if they get that far. So this thing starts officially August 25th. The gold medal game is uh, September 10th. And then training camp for the Grizzlies will start that third, that fourth um, uh, weekend, that final week in September, three weeks later, as you said. So... You just don't want to overwork him, but there is a program and a plan in place to monitor his minutes uh, and to make sure that he has a leeway and an on-ramp to go from FIBA to training camp without too much of, a, of an overlap there. And I do want to expand on this a little bit because Zach Kleiman has uh, touched on it publicly, um, you know, saying that we have a lot of input with USA Basketball and also with the Spanish national team. Like There is an open line of communication between our organization and their organizations. Is the line so open that if Zach Kleiman or anybody else connected to the Grizzlies franchise felt like, hey, maybe Jaron needs uh, a day off, maybe Jaron... Uh, needs to uh, only play 15 minutes in this next game. Is that the type of thing an NBA team can pick up the phone, call, and maybe not request, but at least um, suggest? 
I, I wouldn't say that that's how it goes in a game to game. Once you get into the schedule, I do think there's a lot of uh, uh, conversation going into the process. And by the time they open up their first practice in a couple of hours here, the program for Jaron will already pretty much be set. The expectation will pretty much already be set. There's going to be built in offloading days. There's going to be built in days off. There's going to be a lot of those things. I don't think uh, he will get. Normally, you don't have to go to a point where you go between, uh, let's just say, uh, the exhibition game on the 13th against Spain, uh, Jaron tweaks something. Can the Grizzlies call and say, hey, he has to sit out the next practice? Um, they won't even have to do that. Like, there, there's already an understanding that they're going to treat these guys, not with kid gloves, but they're going to be really, really particular about how they use these guys. And, and, and if they see any, any minor potential red flag, they're going to back down a little bit in terms of that. So I don't think there's going to be conversations moment to moment uh, when a guy feels a little bit of a tweak here or there, but it's also an understanding in general of, hey, let's keep the conversation open. Let's have his his uh, your medical team talk to our medical team, and let's have our guy who's there uh, involved in any of these discussions as well. So the, yeah, the, the conversations are wide open and they're going to stay that way. I'm going to get you out of here with this because the Wi-Fi is a little shaky. No fault of your own. I was recently dealing with shaky hotel Wi-Fi uh, myself, so I know what you're going through. I appreciate your time. Last thing before I let you go. Um, any off-season thing that happens in the NBA, we – often try to talk about what do we want to see from this person or that person. If it's summer league, you say, hey, here's what we want to see from David Roddy. Here's what we'd like to see from Jake LaRavia. Now we um, are in the FIBA World Champion uh, World Cup. What do we want to see from Jaron Jackson and to a lesser degree, Santi Aldama, uh, where when it's all over on September 11th, I guess, uh, we can say, you know what? That was a really nice month plus for Jaron Jackson. That was a really nice, nice month plus of international basketball for Santi Aldama. I think, and I'll start with Jaron really quickly. I think you want to, well, both of them, you want to see him get through it healthy, period. Yeah. That's number one, right? Secondly, you want to hear Jaron's leadership because he's, uh, again, there's some good guys, some, some, some solid guys on his team. Mikael Bridges is here. Uh, Brandon Ingram is here. Obviously, uh, Bobby Porters, who won a championship with Milwaukee, is here. Um, you know, you, you have Anthony Edwards uh, is a rising star, but Jaron has a chance now to be that voice of, hey, I've been here. I know what we're doing here. Uh, I was on one of these teams that, you know, is the second best record in the West. My voice should resonate a little bit. And that's going to be important, particularly going into the Grizzlies training camp and season, because this is going to be Jaron is the longest tenured Grizzly right now. Dylan Brooks is no longer here. So no one has been in a Grizzly uniform longer than Jaron Jackson Jr. So those leadership skills he can learn here at Team USA are going to translate when he gets back home to, to Memphis. For Santi, no other player on that Spanish team had played in more NBA games last season than Santi. He played in 77 NBA games, including 20 starts. So when you talk about that, can he sort of take that next step as a reliable big man? He's going to help anchor that front line. It's going to be important for him to be aggressive to look for his opportunities and to be able to show his versatility. So if you can show those two things from Santi and get Jaron where you need to get him in terms of leadership, uh, that'll be a plus for these guys coming into Grizzlies training camp. That is Mike Wallace from 